Ninian Wang is in the audience. I see you. Uh, and Ninian was uh, the very first woman to agree to come forward to speak about her experience with, with Justin Callback. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Ninian worked very hard to uh, convince other women to come forward as well and get them comfortable with it. And I know you've been, Ninian's going to be speaking tomorrow. Uh, so please listen to that. But I know you've been thinking a lot about how we change things in, in retrospect. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, I think that people are very focused on courage and bravery. And I've heard so many people say that must have been taken a lot of courage. So there was courage involved, but there was also a lot of hard work before and afterwards. I think of it as just like work. You have a goal. In this case, my goal was to get a predator out of a position of power. And then there are steps that you would do to achieve that goal. Evidence, creating a timeline, a pattern, establishing enough logical evidence that when anyone looks at it, they will reach the same conclusion. And we did the article, and then we did a lot of work to contact the LPs. I asked the other accusers to contact the LPs. We got uh, contacted by more uh, accusers, who I then connected to the reporters. So we actually did probably, I think I did, 100 hours of work before and after the article. And people keep saying, why is this time different? And I do think the macro climate plays into it, but also the amount of work that we did also affected things. You also have an interesting idea about how we move forward. Like, what, what's a solution to that? How do we make sure this doesn't happen to more women? Oh, well, there are a lot of things that I think we should do. Um, I think that the long-term solution that people have said is that in hyper-masculine situations, such as police forces, military, that harassment will gradually occur. So the long-term solution is actually to get more diversity, as people have discussed. I think in a shorter term, having a place where people can report harassment is very important. So I have heard many founders say to me, um, I've been harassed by multiple investors, but I have to keep working in the tech industry. But I've never heard anyone say, I've been groped by multiple doctors, but I have to keep going to the hospital. <laughs> And that is another situation where there's a person in a position of authority and a person in a very vulnerable situation, but there is not harassment. So I think we can learn from the medical industry. They have a medical board. If someone is harassed, they can immediately call that number, and it does not take 10 years of concerted effort to expose a doctor who's been harassing people. So I think that there's a lot we can learn from that situation. If there's a third party independent person who can investigate claims and make recommendations, that's much better than what's happening right now where the third party is journalists. There's no place to report harassment of investors, so people have to go to the press. And that's bad for everyone involved because week after week there are bad headlines and the women have to relive their harassment in public. So if there were a third party that you can actually call who will investigate and recommend solutions, I think that that would go a long way. Is Katie Benner here? Hi. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about the, the media because, um, you know, I was chasing this story, Katie was chasing this story, Fortune was chasing this story for a very long time and it was a very difficult story to do because you have to convince women to come forward. And I'm curious, Katie, Katie reported, a, had a great story in the New York Times uh, where she moved this story forward and I'm curious, Katie, what the experience of, of doing that was like for you. So one of the interesting things about it is that the follow-up story that I did was in some ways easier to do than the story just about Justin Caldbeck because the silence had been broken. And I think that people really underestimated how powerful it is to break the silence. So in the couple of weeks since that story, I've gotten a lot of pushback from investors and people I really like saying, the problem with what you did is that now there's going to be a witch hunt and none of these men will meet with women anymore because it's too dangerous for them. They, they have to cut women out of the process essentially because now, You've, you've created an environment where no man can comfortably get a drink with a woman. Now, I, that's very, oh, sorry, they want me to move into the light. That, that seems a little bit Mike Pensy to me, so I don't <laughs> have to that as an idea. Um, but, I'm saying that in the group. But, but the reality of the situation is that the opposite is true. And what I keep asking these men, and even some of the women who've said the same thing is, by being silent and protecting all of these guys, did you get to parity? 
Did you get the job you wanted? Did you get the CEO spot you deserved? Did you get funding? Because if the answer is yes, then you're right. Keep it all a secret. But if the answer is no, and I think like less than 5% of GPs are women, seems like a small number, not a lot of women are getting funding. I have a friend who's an angel investor who told me that of his portfolio, the women led companies that fail, it's because they don't get follow on funding, mm -hmm. not because they are bad companies. These are really, really drastic things. And apparently keeping things a secret, oh my God. <laughs> Please, we wanna see you, we want to see you. And apparently keeping things a secret didn't change the system. So I think that one of the things we're going to see the press do is try to continue to look at the story from a variety of angles, not just these are bad people who did bad things. Because I think we're also already seeing VC firms take action within their own firms. Um, there have been two angelists, and I forgot the other one, who've said we've done an internal investigation and we think something has gone wrong. So I don't think, I mean, I think that that process has begun. I think for the press, it's also, um, what are the structural issues that allow harassment per to persist? Why can't LPs and potential employees and potential portfolio companies make the best decisions possible? Well, they don't have all the information they need. You know, so I do think the story will continue.